Welcome everybody. This video is going to be so super cool because we're finally making like a cool little application and we're using all the fundamental knowledge that we've built up over the last like 49 videos. So it's really cool to see this stuff come together. The one thing I wanted to warn you guys is that we are going to get into some new stuff. So if you don't get everything, don't freak out and run around the house screaming. It's going to be okay. Uh, just trust me that it works. I just ask that you and trust me with your programming <laughs> and I assure you that nothing will go terribly too wrong okay just maybe a little bit wrong so what are we gonna do we are going to make a guessing game and let's just kinda write out the point of this game we are going to create a game where the user has to guess a number from 0 to 5 then what we want to do is output whether or not the person is correct that's where we'll start and then we'll try to get a little bit more complex from there. All right, so where do we even begin? Well, the first thing is, you know, we need to give some output so the user knows what is going on. But uh, let's do some kind of maintenance stuff and get some variables ready beforehand just to uh, get some of the harder stuff out of the way right away. So one thing I wanted to do is generate a random number. And this is actually surprisingly complicated for a computer. <laughs> so what ends up happening is we have what's known as a pseudo random number. So pseudo means fake or like false. So essentially it resembles a random number, but it's not entirely random. And this is actually a really cool thing to study on because some of the ways people make these random numbers are insanely complex, right? So if it's like a secure system and like we can't let people get access because we have something secret, what we can do is we can make some sort of random number. And the way this random number happens will take take something from the the time, it'll take something from the temperature of the machine or anything really, and it'll basically mix all this stuff together and get some random number. If you're really, really, really talented, you could decode this number and get access into that machine. But generally, these random numbers are random enough that it doesn't really, uh, doesn't really allow access. So that's just kind of like an extreme example. But most of the time, we just need a random number for a stupid game or something. <laughs> but with that, all of that stuff that goes into building that, quote, random number is known as seeding the number. So the, the, the number gets seeded. So to write this out, we'll have what's known as a pseudo random number generator, which is a really long word, but that's okay. And this thing gets seeded with some data. It outputs a result. So let's just clean this up a little. There we go. Okay, so let's do this. So our random number is going to be based off of a value and that value is known as the seed. In our situation, our seed is going to be generated from the clock. The reason it's generated from the clock is because the clock on the computer changes so rapidly that it can really make it easy to get a random number. It's one of the most common ways to build a random number. So what we're going to do is we're going to type some stuff out and then I'll explain it. So we're going to call a function srand and pass in another function called time and then put null. And essentially what's going on is we're calling this time function, which gives us a value, which we then pass to this srand function. And essentially we are telling the random number generator where to get the seed value from. We're getting it from the time. All you need to know is that the time function does work without passing in something explicit here, specifically a pointer. It just works with null, so it's good. Next thing we need to do is we need to create a random number. So we're going to say random number and then call a function rand. And that's where we're actually going to get that value. So at this point, let's just print that random value to see what happens. All right, we have a warning. It's not the end of the world, so we'll just, we'll just run it. Segmentation fault 11. <laughs> okay, it didn't like that. No matter how many times I run it, I get this segmentation fault. So segmentation fault is basically when you're trying to do something you're not allowed to do. Uh, specifically accessing some area of memory. So part of the issue here is that uh, I looked into it a little bit more and you can see we have this warning implicit declaration of function rand. So what that is telling us is that we are basically trying to define a function out of the blue that doesn't exist. So C is not recognizing this rand as a correct function, something that already exists. 
And the reason is because we didn't include an important include statement. So what we need to do is we need to say include standard lib.h. Save that, now let's give it a try. All right, we're getting closer. Now it should run in theory. Okay, still an issue. All right, so let's see if I can work with the format strings here. All right, so I got another similar issue when I was working around with this because now it's saying that time is invalid. So in order to fix this, I actually forgot another include. Gosh, I'm slacking today. And this is time.h. So when you're getting these weird errors when you think things are supposed to be working, the chances are you just forgot to include something or you typed it wrong. <laughs> All right, let's give it a go. Uh, I'm just going to keep that percent %d to format it as an integer. It should work. Awesome, and we get this huge number. All right, so I'm going to add a new line just to make this a little prettier. And there you go. You can see the number right there. And as I run it more and more times, you can see that the number continually goes up. It's almost like it's counting, which, by the way, it is. It's tied to our clock, so that's really good. <laughs> so we are getting a pseudo-random number. The issue is, is that it's humongous. <laughs> and if you look back at our original guide, it said pick a number from 0 to 5. So how in the world do we kind of convert this into a random number with the range 0 to 5? That's the next challenge of this little coding project. And this is a great time to talk about the use of the modulus operator. So the modulus operator looks like this, and I believe I brought this up to you guys before. It essentially just gives you the remainder of some division. But the cool thing is, is that you can use this remainder to do a lot of cool tricks. So for example, if you need a number within a range, you can use the modulus operator to do that for you. If we wanted a value zero to five, all we would need to do is do modulus six. Oops, not, gosh, I said six and I type five. <laughs> so we need to do modulus six. And the reason we do modulus six is because that would allow for a remainder of zero to five. It's gonna take that huge number, divide it by six, and whatever's left over using integer division is going to be assigned to random number. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask the user for an input, and if that input is the, the same as the random number, then they win. Otherwise, they lose. So the first thing we need to do is we need to ask the user for some input. So we're gonna use the printf and um, just say something like, guess a number zero to five. And I was also thinking what would be kind of cool is instead of really restricting this to just five, um, we could still use five and we could still hard code it for now. Um, but I think it'd be a little cooler if we used a variable. So if we did something like max value and set that equal to five, and then we reference this variable. So if we wanted to change the number in the future, we could just go back and change this variable. So instead of six here, we're going to use max value plus one. And instead of five here, we're gonna use percent %d, which will output the value, max value. And we'll just add a colon. It should be good to go. So let's, uh, let's, let's try it out. Okay, um, the random number is one. We'll leave that there just so we can kind of see what's going on. And it says guess the number zero to five. And um, it's not getting an input because we still gotta do the scan f. So what we need to do is we need to define a variable uh, for the user input. So we can say input, and then we can use scanf or various other functions. And we're going to go with type %d, because it's a number. And we're going to store that using the address of operator input. This will allow, allow it to change the value of input. And then we're gonna do the comparison. So if input is equal to random number, they win. Otherwise, they don't win. Sorry. This should work, and um, let's just give it a go and see what I missed if I forgot anything. Guess a number zero to five, and it says one, so let's put one. It says you win, and I'm gonna add some new lines just to make it a little prettier. And now let's try again where we don't get the right answer. So it's four, let's go with five. You don't win, try again. <laughs> 
So there you go, that is how you make a simple guessing game. Uh, the cool part here is that we can actually change this max value to like 50. And we could we should also probably change our documentation there. So now it's more general. Okay, let's run this. And you can see now the value is 25. And it still works. So there you go guys, that's a simple guessing game. Now if I wanted to expand upon this, which I would if if I felt like it, <laughs> what I would do is I would make a system to where, all, and also by the way, in the actual final product, you're not going to want to print the random number. That kind of defeats the whole purpose. <laughs> but in, in the uh, production one, I would probably say, oh no, your number was too high, try again. Or, oh no, your number was too low, try again. And I would make this in a, in a loop system and we haven't really talked about loops, but we'll be getting there in future videos. But basically you could create a loop to keep asking it as long as their number is not the correct number. And as they get closer, like let's say the, the, the random number is 25, they say 28, it says too high. And then they say 24, it says too low. And it, it makes it a lot easier to get to the uh, final answer. So hopefully this was cool and helpful for you guys. I did mention that it was pretty complex at the beginning, and it's not too bad. The only thing is this this random number stuff can, can be a, l a little bit much sometimes. So hopefully you guys understand how this all works. And if you do, then good. That makes one of us. <laughs> Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.